welcome back friends let's learn some more fundamentals and in this video i'm going to teach you what is transition and what is transversion how we use the transition transversion matrix to calculate the scores for nucleotide sequences which we are comparing i hope you are enjoying my videos please do not forget to like subscribe and comment nucleotide bases are of two types purines and pyrimidines as you can see, purines which are adenine and guanine have two rings in their structure and pyrimidines which are cytosine and thymine have one ring in their structure. Mutations change DNA in which one base is replaced by another. A mutation that changes one purine to other purine or one pyrimidine to other pyrimidine is called a transition. We can see here that in transition, the number of rings do not change. There are a total of four possibilities of transition. Adenine base changes to guanine or vice versa. Similarly, cytosine base changes to thymine or vice versa. On the other hand, if mutation changes one purine to a pyrimidine or a pyrimidine to a purine, this is called a transversion. Here, one ring structure changes to a two ring structure or a two ring structure changes to a one ring structure. As we can see here, there are eight possibilities of transversion. Adenine may change to cytosine or it may change to thymine. Similarly, guanine may change to cytosine or to thymine. Cytosine may change to guanine or it may change to adenine. Thymine may change to guanine or to adenine. This figure summarizes all possible transitions and transversions. The frequency of transitions observed in DNA sequences is much greater than the frequency of transversion. This means we see more transition mutations in a DNA sequence than transversion mutations. Keeping these natural frequencies in mind, a weight matrix called transition transversion matrix is used while comparing two related DNA sequences. Even if the two sequences are distantly related, use of this matrix reduces the noise. Here you can see that if two bases are identical, that means they are exactly same, they get a score of zero. And this you can see on the diagonal of this weight matrix. If they show a transition event, they get a score of minus one. If they show a transversion event, which is a lower chance, they are penalized more and get a score of minus 5. This animation shows how do we locate the scores for identical bases using this matrix. And here we see how to locate for transition scores which show four possibilities. And here we see how to locate for transversion scores which are eight possibilities. Let's learn how to use this matrix to calculate transition transversion scores for the two example DNA sequences. In this example, we will first identify and locate the transition and transversion events like this. Then we will use the values from the matrix and we will write them down below the basis. We will add them to get a score. How about practicing this simple question? Try and match your answer with my answer. You got it right. Now you are ready to use transition transversion matrix. So today we learned what are transitions and transversions and how to use transition transversion matrix. If you have any questions and suggestions, please comment. Your comments are always welcome. In this series, in my next video, I'm going to teach you about how to find the correct gap position while comparing two protein sequences. Don't forget to watch. Till then, bye-bye and thanks for watching my video.